How to use a CSS file. This video tutorial will be a very short and simple overview of how to use an external CSS file to control the presentation of your HTML content. Uh, it's generally a, a very, very good idea to use this approach if you are creating a one page website and you want to. Uh, do manual styling of your content. Um, that's fine. That may not really be the worst idea if it's really, really going to be one page. But as soon as you have more than one page and you want to exert some kind of uh, uh, control over the way your page looks with minimal effort, external CSS file is absolutely the way to go. Now, in general, I do not recommend organizing your website on your Windows desktop. You should definitely uh, keep your web pages and associated files in uh, a well-organized folder structure on your hard drive or on your web server, but for demonstration purposes, I will do things on, off the desktop just to make things very simple and easy to see. So as you can see here, I've got uh, an HTML page and I've got a, another file with a .css extension. We'll come back to that um, CSS file in a second, but first, let's just take a look at what our web page looks like. So um, we'll open the page and as you can see it's blank. And the reason is because there's no content. So what I'll do is uh, go to that page and I will bring it open, bring it up in my uh, text editor. And as you can see there's nothing between the body tags so there's essentially no content right now on the page. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll use an H1 tag which is a uh, standard HTML tag that your browser, every browser recognizes, and I'll put a little uh, test code, test content in there. So let's say test content. We'll save our work and we'll refresh the page, and there we go, test content. Now, if we wanted to style that, we'd have to do it uh, manually and say, and uh, in the H1 tag itself, we'll we'll say style equals and in the quotes, um, color red. And we'll save our work and go back and refresh the page. And now our text is red. But what if we wanted to achieve the exact same goal using an external style sheet? What we would do is first get rid of the manual formatting there. We'll save that and just go check our work and we'll see we're back to the default color of black. Now we need to, um, first we need to create a link to the style sheet. So I've just to save a little time, I've created this little snippet and I'm uh, cheating a bit right here. So I'll go ahead and get my uh, style sheet link code from this little snippet here. And I'll go back to my code. And your style sheet link needs to go in the head section of your HTML page. So between the opening and closing head tags, you'll put what's called a link tag. And very, very quickly, uh, the attributes of this tag are the href, which literally states what the uh, location a uh, name of the external CSS file is, the relation type, and then the type. We won't go too much into that. It's out of the scope of this lesson, but just the most important thing to be aware of is that you need to create a link to your external style sheet, and here's how you do it with this code right here. Now the assumption here is that the style sheet is in the exact same folder as the web page, and in this case it actually is because everything's on my Windows desktop, and your Windows desktop technically is a folder, so they're both in the same folder. Let's go into the style sheet and let's do a little editing. I'll open it with my text editor. And the style sheet's blank. So what I'll do is create a style definition for the H1 tag. It's very, very simple. I'll just type H1 and do opening and closing brackets. And then what I'll do is I'll say uh, color red and I'll save my work. Go back to the browser, refresh, and as you can see, the text is now red. But once again, do uh, make note that in the original HTML file, there is no manual styling here. I did not define this as being red. What's happening is there's a link right here in my HTML page to an external style sheet. In that external style sheet is a definition for an H1 tag. 
here is that h1 tag. And a funny thing happens is if I create another h1 tag, and I'll call this test content number two, and we'll make this one number one, save our work, go back to the browser, you'll now notice there are two h1 tags and they're both red. And the reason why they're red is because there's an external link to a style sheet and in that style sheet is a definition for the h1 tag. Now what happens if I make this second tag uh, an h2 instead of an h1? You'll notice that our custom formatting disappears for the second line because we have no definition in our style sheet for h2. We only have a definition for h1. So let's go back and let's make a definition for h2. I'll just copy that and I'll make this one h2 and let's say that an h2 tag is going to be green. Go back to our HTML file, refresh, and now you'll see that our h2 tag is green. So let's recap what we've learned today. The first thing to remember is that your style sheet and your web page uh, are assumed to be in the same folder unless you specify otherwise. In this case they are. They're both on the Windows desktop which could be C temp or C data or folder on your web server either way but they both need to be in the same folder unless you specify otherwise. In the HTML page you need to create a link to that external file. In this case we've created a link to the file my-style.css. If that was in a folder called uh, C temp it would have to be C colon backslash temp my-style.css. In this case it's in the same folder. And then in that CSS file we create definitions for the different types of tags we want to use. H1 and H2 are standard uh, HTML tags are recognized by all browsers. So we went to our style sheet, we created a definition for H1 and H2. Uh, in this case we made it red. We could make, we could change that red to blue. Then we could go back to our browser and refresh and now the H1 is blue. So you ha there you have it. You create an external link to a style sheet in the head section of your HTML page, and in that style sheet, you create definitions for different tags that you want to use, and the end result is customized or stylized uh, content that's defined in an external file. And once you start to make web pages that are several pages large and become more complex, it becomes tremendously easier to manage your changes and change a bunch of things from one place. And that's how you uh, work with an external CSS file in an HTML page.